Hi, and welcome to House Education. Call this meeting to order. Do we have a roll call, please? Hey, Representative Allred. Here. Representative Andrew. Here. Representative Berger. Here. Representative Brown. Here. Representative Costin. Here. Representative Lawley. Here. Representative Overmuller. Here. Representative Provenza. Awake. I mean, here. <laughs> Chairman Northrop. Here. Well, we're going to work Senate File 132, Senator Ellis. Welcome to House Ed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before you, you have Senate File 132. I've handed out a spreadsheet that's rather large, and this is nothing fancy. This is something I've been working on and put together years ago. It really just reflects my notes. But this comes to you. Um, as a desire to try and do a better job of how we align our content and performance standards. For those of you who are new on the committee and unfamiliar, we have um, a basket of goods um, that we like to talk about. It's found in 21-9-101B Romanet 1. These are the things that um, our public schools are supposed to be instructing our kids on. So you have reading, language arts, social studies, math, science, fine arts and performing arts, physical education, health and safety, humanities, Career vocational education, we've since changed that to CTE, career tech. Uh, foreign cultures and language, we've since changed that terminology. We now talk about world languages, government and civics, and then most recently, and since I've been in the legislature, computer science was an addition to the basket. Below that, you have common core of skills, which is found in the same section only in Romanet 3. Here, these are I, what I think we could call maybe some softer skills. Problem solving, interpersonal communications, computational thinking, that was added when we added computer science, critical thinking, creativity, and then life skills, including personal financial management skills. So I have those listed out. And as a mom, I see, um, you know, wanted to see how this kind of tracks into my kid's day. But at the bottom, if you look at some of those additional requirements that we add to this area of the statute, for example, you'll see by statute, we say for grades one through eight, reading, writing, and math shall be emphasized. So I highlighted that in orange. And so you can see on the right-hand side of my spreadsheet on the top, my kids in kindergarten, first grade, all the way through eighth grade, more or less received daily instruction in reading and math. Some of the other things though, I just wanted to jot down things that they didn't necessarily receive. Um, science, not daily. Fine and performing arts, they do those on select days. So more of a, a elective. PE, same thing, they rotate through these things. So I put weekly, um, treated as a, an elective. And then we don't have graduation requirements at the statewide level. So I just went off of what Laramie County School District's um, requirements are on the far right hand side where, you're, where you will see ninth through 12th grade. If you go back down to the bottom though, you'll also see some other requirements. One of them, um, looking at my spreadsheet on line 26, it says all school districts shall provide foreign language, now world language instruction in K through two through standards promulgated by the board. The board is supposed to promulgate standards for all these content performance areas, but they don't. For this one, if you look at foreign language or world languages, you'll see content and performance standards that are more or less written, assuming that that student was in seventh or eighth grade or as a high school student. An example would be if you looked at what constitutes proficient, there are parts of that standard that talks about um, how you craft sentences and paragraphs. Clearly not written for a kindergartner who can't write sentences and paragraphs yet. So we really don't have content performance standards, although it's statutorily required that address those early learners. If you keep looking on my spreadsheet, you'll also see under 21-9-102, this requires that all schools and colleges in the state give essentials on the US Constitution and Wyoming Constitution. It also requires that a graduate pass an exam on the principles of the Constitution in order to receive a degree. Um, so this is a requirement. You'll see it listed in the basket. But there are no content and, content and performance standards written specifically for government and civics. That is actually included under the social studies standards. So that's kind of an outlier. If you look down on line 28 of other requirements, school districts may provide sexual assault abuse prevention. We added that language since I've been in the legislature. To my knowledge, no districts offer that. Line 29, you'll see American Indian Education Act for All, which is found at 21-4-602. This requires the state board to revise the social studies content performance standards to make materials that um, better reflect contributions of Native Americans today and just do a better job of, of teaching that subject area. 
So here, this was also passed when I was first elected to the legislature. It was a direction to revise social study standards. These are done every seven years on a rotating basis. So this isn't added as its own standalone class. It's included in the broader context of social study standards. And then finally, just so you know, the only other thing that can constitutes the day is um, we have requirements for fire drills. I've tried in the past to say some of that could be used for other safety um, drills, but those have been rejected. So there are requirements outside of what kids are learning that um, affect their day. When we added computer science, a big concern that we heard was the day is too full. The, the Thanksgiving plate's too full, can't handle anymore. And so at the time I visited with the State Board of Education's liaison and um, was told that our mathematics standards um, that we developed are some of the more robust uh, that, that can be out there. And so I thought as a person who wants to start exposing early learners, including kindergartners, to some of those fundamentals of what computer science is, not just understanding how to use technology, but what goes behind technology. So a good example would be a calculator. We all know the math that goes into the, the um, calculator. It's a tool that we use. So I think some of this knowledge needs to be introduced even at the kindergarten level. And as someone who had a kindergartner at the time, my kindergartner would go to her library and they'd have lab lessons. And so that was to me an opportunity to give that librarian who had those kids for lab time some guidance on what, how she could maybe better utilize her time in, in building some of this computational thinking, which feeds into computer science instruction. But again, back to the discussion, we heard the plate is too full. So as a parent, I thought, wouldn't it be, and as a lawmaker actually, wouldn't it be helpful if we knew, if we were gonna add computer science, what would that mean for this kindergarten day, for the first grade day? Could we maybe lessen some of the math standards and or interweave it in some of the math standards or some of the science standards? Does it have to always be viewed as these giant blocks? So that's where the, this bill originated and the concept came up was how do we better align content and performance standards so that we're not just doing it by subject, but that we're actually looking at what it looks like for a kindergarten day or a first grade day or by grades or grade bands. So um, another example of this and why I think this is important, you know, humanities is listed on there. We don't have content and performance standards written for humanities. Since I've made this spreadsheet, we do now have computer science standards. It takes districts several years to start layering these things in. They, you don't pass a statute saying revise content and performance standards and it's automatically in place the next year. We still have people struggling to implement American Indian Education Act for All. And that's been seven years for me, six or seven years now. So one other example though, as a parent and why I think this is important, the education committee has spent a lot of time talking about the importance of early literacy. Recently, I had my child out of school, all unexcused absences, I'm a horrible mom, I know. I asked her teacher for a packet and my, teacher's, my daughter's teacher was kind enough to provide one. And we were going through her math homework. Um, she had several word problems in there and they're learning fractions. And so the examples would be Susie ran one and a half miles, Johnny ran one and three quarter miles. Um, and then another student ran another two miles. How many miles were ran in total? And she struggled with the word problem. So as I was going through it with her, I said, well, let's, let's break out the numbers. Let's just put it in a math equation. She had no problem doing that. Where she struggled was as it, as it was presented as a reading problem. But when she gets graded and when she gets dinged, it's because of her comprehension in math. When it's not, it's literacy. So this is brought to you in a place of genuine concern of how we can better target students, better identify where their learning deficiencies are, and hopefully get some sense of what's going on in the day. When this bill was heard on the Senate side, we, it was the same day that we had the cohort of teachers that had come down from the Department of Education's program where they get the Milken winner, the teacher of the year. Resoundingly, teachers said, I love this because the way that content and performance standards are given to them, they tend to teach it that way. Here's my time for hour for reading, my hour for math, my hour for science. So yes, when you do add something like computer science, it's more to a plate. This is an attempt for us to do a better job of addressing what's in the basket, how it overlays together to reduce some of the number of content and performance standards that are out there and just make the, the day more workable. As I drafted this bill, this has been something I've been thinking about for years, but I know talking about the basket is always a very sensitive and touchy subject, but it was well received on the Senate side. As I mentioned during committee hearings, um, the teachers that were present said they loved this idea. They thought it would be helpful in their day. It uh, passed out of the Senate education five to one appropriations Four uh, were there one excused and then on third reading 30 of the senators voted for it with only one voting no. This is intended to be 
a study bill, a first step. When I drafted it, LSO had talked to me about another piece of legislation that would have actually mandated um, which were priority standards, which standards needed to go. It was way more prescriptive. I think that a lot of look needs to be done at this and it needs to be careful study and it needs to be done slowly, done slowly and thoughtfully. So what you have before you in its engrossed form would essentially um, amend the duties of the State Board of Education to align their content and performance standards more by grade or grade band. And then there are two components that are in the shall study. And you'll see those, this is a study bill, so I'm not gonna read that to you, but it's on page two and three. In working on this bill on the Senate side, you might've seen a dramatic amendment that was adopted. That was in response to the Department of Education, recognizing that this is an aggressive undertaking. So they either needed more time to complete the study and perhaps more funding, or we could leave the remaining paragraphs in place to provide some guidance of how the study could work. So beginning on page three in paragraph B, starting on line 14, this would be the permissive part of what the, um, the study could entail, may entail, to give context of where we're hopefully going to go in this pursuit. So you'll see then all of what was required in the study is presented on the bottom of page three through page four on to page five um, as being permissive areas. And those were to, again, give some guidepost and direction to the department and the consultant. The feedback I received in talking with the department was that this would take time, and I don't disagree. I've read these content and performance standards. I'm not an academic, I don't, this isn't my field of expertise. I think in the, within the department, they recognized they would need some outside expertise. We talked about when the study would be prepared. My view, Mr. Chairman, was that having it done right was better than having it done soon. So rather than having September 15th, we kicked it back to November 1st. I'll acknowledge that on the bottom of page five, it recommends that the Joint Education Committee may want to include legislation by the 2024 budget session. If you want to amend that to kick that out to 2025, that might be appropriate or leave it in there, recognizing that maybe you want to look at another or maybe we as a legislature want to extend this study if our preliminary information that we get, we find to be fruitful. But I want to offer that information that this is the result of a lot of discussion with the department. Um, and I just also want to acknowledge that this bill has been out there. I have not since had any requests from any of the large trade organizations representing education entities have reached out to me expressing concerns or wanting to draft amendments. I am always willing to do that. Um, but Mr. Chairman, that's the bill. That's its intent. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Though recognizing this is the last bill brought to your committee behind several other controversial uh, measures, knowing it has an appropriation, I definitely can see the writing on the wall for this one, but certainly appreciate your time today. Thank you, Senator Ellis. Questions for the Senator? Go ahead, Representative Clawson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Ellis. <clears throat> I think this is a great idea. My question is, are, is the state board doing, seems like they're doing that same work right now with profile of graduate. Like they have the Marzano research going on. They've completed phase one. Um, so I, I don't know if it's needed, do you feel it's needed or do you feel like this work is currently being done by the state board and the department already? Mr. Yes, Senator. Mr. Chairman, I think the profile of the graduate work has been ongoing and important. It has taken a while. I've listened to a lot of those hearings. They and rightfully are starting at the end goal and how, trying to work backward of what needs to be done. This isn't doing that so much. This is a clear direction of how do we organize the, stat, the content and performance standards by grade. So I think it complements their work, but I do think it's a little different information that um, would be a tool for the state board to use. Ultimately, that it's the state board that would promulgate any kind of content performance standards similar to a rulemaking. So this would be information that they could use to do that. Further questions? Go ahead, Representative Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Ellis, <clears throat> I, you and I have sat on these committees for, you know, it's the first time that you haven't been on this committee for the past six years. So I appreciate your your willingness to dive into this. And I, I know you say that this isn't your bailiwick, but I would venture to say that it is now because of how much passion you have put into it. My question is directly uh, based off of subsection B on page three. And, and it's really about the, the detail of the bill. When we go into a, they may study, and then we go in and say, you may study this, but you need to include it at a minimum. It just seems a little goofy to me, just the statutory construction of how this was put in there. My thought, and, and I'm just trying to gauge your, your reaction to this, that 
if we say they may study, why not just broaden it open and just let them say they may study everything underneath this and then get rid of everything it says to include it a minimum. Um, let them go after what they want to study as it relates to 21.9.101b uh, and pursuant to 21.2.304a3. Mr. Chairman, Representative Brown, when you look at the bill, the only section that would be amended in its current form in the green books is 21.2.304. Going on to this, this, is a this would be session law. And I am much less concerned about the exactness of session law since it is evolving. My goal in keeping this language initially, all of these paragraphs and Romanets in B were part of the mandatory study. So we transitioned it to being permissive. We discussed whether or not to remove that language entirely, but in to illuminate what we're trying to achieve here, I actually asked that it be left in, in the permissive language to give them guidance and actually to inform you on the other half of the chamber of what the end goal is. Again, I don't think this bill finishes and starts and finishes this process. I think this is a very important starting point where the department can then come explain to the Joint Education Committee what it's discovering, what it's finding out, if additional studies warranted, how much that's gonna cost, what other things they need. This is step one of a very small series of steps, small but important, the content and performance standards. If you visit with our teachers and you would know this, I think one complaint we've heard year after year is, it is a mess and there are a lot of things. And as a parent, I'm concerned that we're not even targeting the right things necessarily when it comes to where our kids need some interventions. Representative Berger, you had a question? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Senator Ellis, do you think it hurts to give the State Board of Education a little direction, a little more direction? Go ahead, Senator Ellis. Mr. Chairman, I'm aware of another bill that another member from your chamber has brought. I thought that that approach and had been um, discussed, uh, this had been come to me when I had asked for this bill draft because they're similar, but they're different. I don't want a study that already says you shall do these things, reduce the number of content and performance standards by a certain amount, shall have the priority of reading, writing, blah, blah, blah. I, that to me was too prescriptive. This should be a little bit of a journey along the lines of where the profile of the graduate work has been done, but on the kind of front end of like, how can we maybe overlay some of these things? Another example I'd offer in doing that work is that other bill, I think, set out what the priority standards were. In my view, things that are overlooked are world languages. We all know that the best time to teach kids a foreign language is when they're little and their brains are like sponges. But do we do that? Some districts, yes. Other districts, no. My district for years plays what we call salsa videos on Spanish, and they check a box. Other districts actually fly overseas, places like Spain, and recruit Spanish-speaking individuals to come teach in their schools. That's the disparity in Wyoming. So when I ask for content and performance standards, and this has been an ongoing conversation I've had with the department and with the State Board of Education, how do we develop appropriate content and performance standards for foreign language? The notion not being that it's more to the plate, but can it supplement reading and language arts? If you're learning a Latin-based language, then yes, absolutely, learning some of the core Latin subjects is going to improve your literacy skills. But it's always viewed as another add-on to the basket, another add-on to the day, instead of maybe being embraced as an opportunity to strengthen language and reading and writing. So that's the goal of this study, is how do we synthesize all this better without mandating at the outset what the priorities are and how many standards need to be reduced? Further questions for a good center? Representative Provenza. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator. Um, I guess I have a question about, so I know our NAEP scores are, are good on a lot of our like standard core. Do you know on some of these other things, if there's, <clears throat> excuse me, any metric of kind of our performance in comparison to other states? Go ahead, Senator. Mr. Chairman, Representative Provenza, I think the question of whether or not our NAEP scores, scores are good is one that's debatable. I think you can hear people that will look at our scores and look at the raw scores and say, if you look at us as a ranking, we rank high. But if you look at some of our neighboring states that maybe have spent significantly less per pupil than we do, the difference between our NAEP scores in some categories is negligible. So it's all a matter of perspective. I think nationally, we're also aware on NAEP that uh, other states that shut down their schools for long periods of time had significant learning loss. So I don't know how to say it delicately, but their scores have gotten lower. Ours maybe have stayed more consistent. So that maybe makes us look higher on a ranking when we're not really that much higher. We're just kind of staying flat. 
but these are all subject to debate. So I, I don't look at NAEP as the end all be all of um, whether or not students are proficient in reading. You can have those same arguments when you look at YTOP scores or NAEP scores. I think where we start falling apart and where I get concerned, and we've made huge strides in our graduation rate. I get really nervous about patting ourselves on the back, looking at NAEP scores at fourth grade and eighth grade for reading and math and saying, oh, look at us, we're doing good. I think we can always be doing better. For those kids that, you know, we'll look, same thing with reading proficiency on YTOP. There are some people who say, look, our numbers are great. But if you drill down and start looking at some districts where those scores are low, we have to be doing better. So to me, you know, I don't know that this necessarily correlates. I think at the end of the day, that's the goal is to improve reading scores because it's a metric of that entire learning spectrum. But back to my example of my kid who's struggling in math, she's not struggling in math. It's a reading problem. So maybe this would be a tool for us to say, how do we, instead of having such intense math content and performance standards for the lower grades, spend more time reading and writing. And then maybe you catch up on some of the math later on. It's a goal to better synthesize all that. And I don't know if that answered your question, but I'm just really reluctant to say, we're doing great on NAEP, we're doing great on YTOP. That to me, I just, I would disagree with that for a lot of reasons. Follow up, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess part of my question was um, the the other things that fall under here. So NAEP, whatever, you know, covers the those standard cores. I you mentioned like foreign language and cultures. So I'm I'm trying to see kind of where uh maybe there's evidence to suggest that we're not meeting the mark, um, other than anecdotal, if you have some. Go ahead, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No. And I think that's been an area of concern for the legislature since I've been here is on the social studies piece, our requirement and emphasis in three different spots. That's why I emphasize it. We want our kids to know government and civ civics. They want them to know about their constitution. But when we go do door to door, here's the anecdotal. How many times have some you told someone you're running and they say, oh, go give them heck in Washington, D.C.? There's a little bit of a breakdown. So I think that's when you start seeing people bringing bills that would mandate, you know, the, con the citizenship test as a metric for that, because there is no statewide assessment on some of these areas. But you bring up an important point. Right now, if you look at, for example, CTE, career and technical vocation, they actually have standards promulgated for elementary school kids. And they're really basic things like learning about jobs and occupations and CTE. Nothing, you know, as you consider like a woodworking class or a welding class, that's all reserved as an elective when you're in junior high and high school. When we added computer science, that was the big question. What are we envisioning here? Is this a mandatory thing that kids are going to get training on K through 12, like reading, like math, or is it another elective? And so I think there's also disparity among the districts and how they're tackling that and how they view that. Um, some districts really embracing it. Me, for, I for one think that that's the future of Wyoming. The notion that we're leaving kids behind and that makes me sad. Women and minorities are underrepresented in the fields of STEM. I'm just looking at my moon landing data. Um, that's why we pass computer science as a great equalizer and job opportunity for those kids. That said, it has been a fight. Watching computer science added to the basket has been a fight. Maybe we could do a better job of, as we identify things that should be in the basket or how it's organized, as a legislature really articulate those things that we think are mandatory, i.e. graduation requirements versus things that are more elective. And then along those lines, one thing I honestly hear a lot about is life skills. You see this on social media all the time. I wish somebody taught me how to do my taxes and make, you know, make brownies and turn on the oven. I don't know what these people know how to do, but life skills is listed under the common core of skills. In Cheyenne, we have three high schools and then an alternative high school. This is not offered even uniformly within my district. I have a banker who's very um, passionate about financial management skills. We've talked about how this is done statewide, and I think this is viewed as an elective. When I think the legislature added it, they probably wanted it to be more of a mandatory class. So what do we do with it now? So hopefully we can tease out some of those expectations when we start adding or removing things from the basket. Along those lines with humanities, I think that tends to be, I've never taken a class on humanities. I think we all kind of know what it is. There's, we have you know, humanities council, but do we measure it? No. So we have some thinking to do of how we organize this basket. Further questions? <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Senator. We'll go to the department first and take some comment from them. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Committee members Dickie Shaner speaking on behalf of State Superintendent Dagenfelder here today. 
the superintendent does not have uh, a position on this bill, but would like to first state it's been, um, it, she appreciates the amount of time that Senator Ellis has spent talking with her and our team through this bill and the amendments that have been made. Um, but did uh, want to point out that a lot of the work around streamlining standards and, and district assessment systems is underway with the State Board of Education right now. They even talked about it this morning at their meeting. So a lot of that work is, is proceeding that would be aligned to what's being discussed in this bill. Um, one uh, sort of just overarching statement and then one small amendment. Um, so what what we appreciate about this bill is that it doesn't set those sort of arbitrary caps on the number of standards, or it doesn't come in and just adjust the state accountability or the state assessment system, because you know, our teams spend years with experts, um, either outside consultants or district leaders to develop all of these systems. And um, so to have a bill just sort of come in over the top, um, present some challenges just for the, for the work and the buy-in that we need from all of those leaders across the state. Um, also the extended time to November 1st is helpful and the funding because we know we're gonna need some outside help to do a lot of this, particularly looking at that basket of goods. Um, and then with the amendment, Mr. Chairman, um, just for your consideration on page two, on line seven, after level, instead of ending the sentence there, um, we would respectfully request that it just be a comma and then add to the extent practical and then, and then end the sentence. And the reason we, we would recommend that is in high school, the content areas are not necessarily tied to a specific grade. So algebra one, as an example, is, can be taken in several grades. And so um, we certainly understand the intent of trying to make it simple and understand, but in high school in particular, those, those different content areas don't always align to one specific grade. So with that extent practical, um, it would allow a little bit of flexibility for that. And that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chainer. Can you tell me where the State Board of Education gets their dollars? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, their budget is in, it's a budget unit within the department's budget. I hadn't remembered that. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure everybody knew it. Okay. Go ahead, Representative Provenza. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the dates on some of this was discussed, and so I'm wondering if uh, your department has any heartburn over or just uh, requests in terms of do we want to make it November 1st, 2023 on page five, the uh, subparagraph C, and then we've got 2024 listed in D. Um, is that sufficient time um, for the department? Mr. Okay. Chairman, through you, Representative Provenza, thank you for asking that. I think in general, the more time we would have for something like this, the better, but um, November 1st is certainly better than earlier in the year, and I, I think we're equipped to at least come forward with something by November 1st, um, you know, with a budget session pending. I, I'm not sure what would ultimately, in terms of substantive reforms or legislation, um, get legs in a budget session, but I do think November 1st provides us some time to at least bring you some feedback on this context. Go ahead, Representative Lolly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Shainer, could you respond a little bit to the, the, the issue kind of we've heard earlier about, is, is this uh, covered by what the state board is already doing or is it, uh, as Senator Ellis described, dovetail with? And uh, it does seem to have to me a little bit of a different layer to it and nuance perhaps of you know, how you can work within different categories and bring things together. and. And, and again, then that's just the standards issue on some of these, but how do you view that? Yeah, go ahead. Mr. Vice Chair, through you, Representative Lawley, the, um, the work around streamlining the state standards, and, and that is directly tied to a district assessment system. That work is underway. The board has a plan. They've got, I think, math and science ready to go with significant reductions. And then they're just gonna tackle the other content areas um, what this expands upon that, though, when we get into looking at the actual basket of goods, which are 
what are the content areas that we're even going to create standards for? And so I, I think I think yes, that the the state board's work does dovetail in with a lot of this, but that there would be an additional analysis that would need to be done to meet what this law is asking for. Go ahead, follow up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do do you view that additional work as uh, as helpful or in, for, for students for what we're trying to provide? I mean, do do you see that as a valuable thing, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, Representative Lawley, um, you know, it, it's something we should we should always be looking at. As a senator referenced, um, the first time we had made a, sort of a substantive change change to what we call this basket of goods in a, in about twenty years was when we added computer science. So. Did education change in those 20 years? Probably. Did we make any changes? No. So, you know, perhaps this is, uh, you know, just an opportunity to try to stay ahead and look at it. Maybe nothing changes, but maybe maybe something needs to change. So I don't think it hurts to look at that basket of goods in terms of is it still meeting the needs of our kids? Representative Berger, go ahead. I have several questions here, Mr. Okay. Chairman. So. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, uh, Shane, right? Yeah. yeah, Shane. Do you know of any schools or districts in in, in the state that are um, certified high reliability schools, uh, level one? Go ahead, Dickie. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Shainer. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman, through you, Representative Berger, I am um, not familiar with that concept, okay. but I could certainly high reliability yeah. schools number level number two. No. Or number three, this is through Marzano. Direct your comments to okay. yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, sorry, please, yeah, Mr. Chairman. Please, thank please you, don't, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Chairman. If I might have someone from phone a friend, yes, phone a friend. But our our you know chief uh, policy officer might be familiar with that. I am yeah. not. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, do you know these school chairs? Yeah. Please. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Wanda Maloney uh, with the Wyoming Department of Education. Um, we have offered training through Marzano on high reliability schools, and those. Um, and I think Uenta does have um, some schools that fit that category, but we don't necessarily collect that information. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Representative Berger, go ahead. Uh, so you in a county school district number one is high reliability certified level one, two, and they're working on their level three. Did you know, Mr. Chairman, about seven years ago, I believe it was, when all these different changes in statute and requirements came through, did, that's what you and, the, you and the county school district, number one, Mr. Chairman, did you know that they, they took this real seriously and put a lot of time? You know how much time they, Mr. Chairman, how much time they put into pulling these standards out, uh, prioritizing the work that goes into it and how long it's been to Rips, get this. Rips and Burgers, is there a question in there directly yeah, to that's the department? A, yep. Do you know how long that's taken, Mr. Chairman? Do um, you know how long yeah. that takes? Anyone? Oh. Long time. Okay. So. Okay. I just, I just want to say, uh, Mr. Chairman, there are some school districts out there that are working really hard on this and are really prioritizing this. All I want to do is try to help enhance this study. That's all I want to do. Okay. Further questions? Go ahead, Representative Clauston. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To, to either one of you, um, we're, you know, we're speaking towards the standards here, and I appreciate there's not a prescriptive number put here. I, I'm looking at uh, page two, line six and seven. You know, you're talking about how some of these standards aren't only in one grade. I'm just thinking about adding um, across all content area by grade level or grade band. Is that kind of what you're getting to? Is that a, would, would that help cover that? Good. Mr. Chairman, to you, to Representative Clauston, I, we believe that would accomplish the same goal as the amendment I suggested. Okay. Further questions? Representative Provenza? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, hopefully it, I'm not too far in the weeds here. I'm, I'm looking at the sheet that was given to us by the Senator. Um, and some of the is issues I think is that, so do you have that by, by any chance? Oh, okay, well. Um, we don't understand them. 
They're <laughs> <laughs> not. They're just my notes. Um. So on line twenty eight of the good document, um, she mentions that school districts may provide child sexual abuse prevention instructions, and we're not sure if there are any districts offering these. And I was attending a, a discussion with Joint Judiciary a couple of weeks ago talking, um, I believe the director of the Peace Officer Standards and Training was there. And I think he mentioned that they are providing some of this service for schools. And so my question is for our statutes that have things like that may, um, is there potentially maybe just a disconnect in being able to say like, we know that districts are offering these because they aren't necessarily required to report anything or what what they're doing because of that may, is that is that a potential gap, I guess? Yeah, Mr. Ahead. Chairman, through you, Representative yeah. Provenza. So if it says may, it, it would not be something that we would require them to report. Um, if, if it was a requirement, um, we would probably either have a report associated with it or through the accreditation process, we would have sort of a box checking exercise where show us, an, we call them an artifact, like show us what you're doing to comply with that section of statute. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Senator Ellis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That statute was passed when I was a, a young legislator and we were looking at um, the basket of goods. And so that was actually brought by uh, Senator Lisa Anselmi Dalton. And uh, the districts were very um, adamant that it not be included as a shall, because again, the day's full, don't have time. When I first get, got in the Senate, a similar effort was underway about um, first aid, CPR training. The fight that we had about adding and how, where to add it and how to add it, the basket was awful. It, it sounds so silly, but it was awful over CPR. Is it a graduation requirement? That was what I think kind of killed the bill ultimately. But what we need to be doing a better job of is again, looking at the basket. What if we looked at instead of PE, physical health and health and safety as separate items in the basket and have them inclu or included as one thing, your health. Then we could maybe look and say, if you wanted to require something like this kind of training or CPR training, how do you weave that into that on existing content performance standard? So I offer that of, that's why I included that in there because it actually had some relevance over something that was hotly contested. And I think we'll resurface again at some point in the future. Um, CPR training, you'd, you'd be shocked how many, the, the fight that we had over that. Thank you, Senator Ellis. Go ahead, Representative Provenza. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, just to clarify, I don't want to go in and say shall in these. I, I'm just kind of seeing potentially where the gaps are trying to understand. Um, Another question I have for uh, you, Mr. Shaner, uh, if you can answer it, is there's been a lot of discussion about student mental health and well-being, and I've just kind of been playing with this idea of should we maybe be trying to figure out how to insert that so maybe one of the common core knowledge or things that we provide students is something to do with well-being or I don't know exactly what that looks like. I, I'm not sure if you have any knowledge of maybe other states that have looked at kind of how to provide either skills or some, I don't know what it is. Um, I, but if 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 you do have any just information on that or sure. um, as you've seen maybe in, in your understanding nationally. Go ahead, Dick. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. to you, Representative Provenza, we'll, we'll send that to you. Go ahead, Representative Berger. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, even Senator Ellis. Um, we have the Common Core skills, it's in statute, but now did, did, didn't we add the employability skills as well? Because we're, we're given an employability skills grade in our district for every core level has to give an, it, every, for every class or, or, or and every, um, core subject for every subject, we give an employability levels or employee, employability skill grade. Is that in statute now? Mr. Ahead, Chairman, Senator Ellis. Mr. Chairman, no. And I could be corrected if the department's wrong, but this is what's in statute right now. Right. I think that's, that's the district level. Further questions for the department? 
Thank you very much for Thank you. clearing some stuff up. Does Wyoming Community Colleges wish to comment? Just monitoring, just looking. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else want to comment on the bill? Or, oh, there we go. It's a bit. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Tate Mullen, Government Relations Director for the Wyoming Education Association. Uh, we're not speaking uh, in favor or in opposition to this, but just wanted to raise some, uh, some of the concerns that have already been uh, brought forward. We do feel that this work is already uh, occurring with the State Board of Education, the profile of a graduate. Um, we also have the Governor's, the Governor's Ride Initiative work uh, that is being undertaken. And while we do appreciate uh, the good bringer of this bill and the intent behind it. Love having the conversation about uh, what is being taught, what the standards are. Um, I think that in terms of a legislative perspective, we have a process every five years that we undertake, that if we were to undertake it fully, that would be the appropriate place and time for the legislature to look at the basket of goods. Otherwise, I'm concerned. Uh, I, I guess I would have questions about capacity, duplicative work when we have so many other things that we could be working on. And with that, I'll stand for any questions. Questions for Mr. Mullen. Thank you, sir. Anybody else want to comment? Going once, going twice. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to reiterate that there is a process for revising the content and performance standards, but it's done by subject. This is trying to steer the ship in a different direction. Should we do that slowly, methodically, with a lot of stakeholder input? Absolutely. But to say that we do this every five years? No, we do every subject every certain number of years. So if we're going to change that, we do need a little nudge. This does change the ship. It starts changing the ship. So I would disagree that this is duplicative in, entirely. And just as a matter of protocol, when I, rem I remember in this legislature, it used to be custom for professional lobbyist organizations to work with sponsors of the bill throughout processes. Um, I, if any of these entities that hire professional lobbyists want to ever discuss language with me, I'm always open to that, always open to amendments. Um, but I think I've started seeing a trend where we get no feedback on the Senate side, at least from my perspective, it waits until it comes over here. And then all of a sudden I start seeing dramatic concerns with bills. So just would respectfully ask, um, you know, people that work in this space professionally to, um, you know, work with both chambers equally. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. You just will stay there. Senator, we'll work your bill. We'll close the public comment. Moved by Lolly. Second. Seconded by Brown. He's just louder. <laughs> <laughs> Closer. Never heard that before. No. <laughs> Representative Lolly, please go ahead. You know, we've heard a lot through this session of different ways and different opportunities in our current public education system to retool, to, to make it better, to be more responsive to the world as it's changing, to be more responsive to needs of students. And, and I think we all want that. And uh, I, would, I would support this bill because I do think, and we've heard testimony that it, it is adding a nuance that's not already there, but I see as valuable, especially with teachers, uh, that as they can combine ideas and subjects and not just be by subject. And that's kind of a structure that's a little bit limiting sometimes. So I, again, I support the bill and I think it really supports some things we've talked about already this session. Go ahead, Representative Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm gonna echo um, Representative Lawley's comments and, and, and more so I'd like to say, you know, my seven years of being on this, in this committee, I, I agree with the Senator that we have done anything and everything that we can to Try to, you know, hey, we want to put this in, or we want to do this, or we want to talk about this. And, and it's always been a no, 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 you can't do it. We've got too much time. We've got too much stuff on our plate. And then when we have a bill that's brought forward that says, hey, look, we want to try to see what we can do to cut this down. And we want to see what we can do to try to reduce the amount and, and try to make this a more simplified process. We hear, well, is somebody already doing that? So I don't think we need to worry about this in law. And I really, that bothers me. Um, that that's our role as legislators and, and as the board of directors, if you will, for, you know, the, the department and, and for everything else that goes on in this state. Um, it's our it's well within our purview to put this forward. 
And, and I completely agree with uh, Representative Lolly on this, that we, we need to take a look at this. Um, every year since I have been in this legislative body, we have talked about how much is on our teachers' plates. And this, this particular bill, as it's written, and I also, I, I, I fully supported the, the other bill that was running through the, it was very similar. We need to do something to cut this down because what's on our teacher's place right now is far too much. And I agree that we've got some stuff working right now, but it is not a directive and it is not coming from this body. And in my opinion, that's what this body's entire obligation is to this state. It is our responsibility. So I will be fully supporting this bill as well, Mr. Chairman. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Anybody else got any comments you want to say? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Bush. In support of this bill, I'm co-sponsor on this bill, but what really got me excited about it is that, I mean, there was one day this session where we had the room full of teachers. And that's always really nice in this committee. We don't always get that. And to hear that they were largely in support of this um, really encourages me to continue to support it. I, I think that often there's a disconnect between um, the people who come to represent the schools and what we actually hear from teachers. And uh, I, I think the teachers are supporting this is something we need to consider. All right, anybody else? Comments? Okay, Representative Provenza. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just, I wanna say I'm, I'm conflicted, I guess, because I do see a lot of really potential potentially positive things coming from this because I think we are, um, I would like to just see kind of a, a, a new refreshed way of looking at education and what our standards are. Part of where I'm torn is, um, you know, er, when we heard the bill earlier, which I was the co-sponsor on that bill, <laughs> um, I my understanding, what I took away from that meeting was that all the teachers and department came and said, please don't pass this legislation because it gets in the way of the process we're trying to do. Um, and I, you know, I supported the bill um, at that point. And then there was, I had to answer some hard questions uh, to teachers who said, well, we showed up in mass and we, we all said we wanted you to not pass the bill. And so I, I, I I was kind of confused at that point. Um, and maybe it was because we were too prescriptive um, in that bill. Uh, maybe it was because uh, the department, and I don't have the time spent here that some of my good colleagues have. So in terms of comments about, we've heard this before, it's getting handled, it's getting handled. I'm just a little surprised by, because I, I think I see really great work from Department of Education. Um, I believe them when they say they're, responding to this and that there's work being done. Um, I also know it takes forever to get some things done. Um, and then I also struggle with, do we, um, yes, the legislature should make sure we're providing a good equitable education, but maybe it's the department that's best suited to do that because they have the people and the expertise to do that. And I'll be the first to admit I don't. Um, I'm learning. Hopefully by the time I'm done here, I can tell you all about all the things. <laughs> but yeah, so I just want to state kind of why I'm conflicted. I still don't know how I'm going to vote, to be quite honest. So um, I do appreciate the bill, um, Senator, and I do. And I think that like this is this is a good thing to kind of move forward with, and at least conceptually. Mr. Chairman. I, this one first, he whispered in my ear. Go ahead, Representative Chair. <laughs> Brown that wasn't Brown. creepy at all. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I just want to be clear. It, it's not the department. Um, and I've never, I, it's not the department. What it is, is it's the state board and it's the, um, what I would say is antagonists that purposely slow things down. It's not the department's work. I've never questioned the department's work. They've been nothing but <clears throat> flawless in their execution of what we tell them to do. So thank you. Comments from the yes, Representative Austin. I won't whisper. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, I think to Representative Provenza's comments, I, I like this better because it's not so prescriptive. 
I'm still not 100% sure it's needed, but I, I don't think it hurts anything. And I do see some benefits where maybe it attacks this problem that we're seeing um, that everybody recognizes, right? So I could see some benefit of this. So um, I think that's why I'm in favor of this with some amendments. Yeah, with some amendments, Representative Lawler. Again, I would I'd echo that too. And, and there is, and I think we heard testimony from Mr. Shaner that there is nuances here that really isn't included in what's already being done, but it would enhance what's already being done, dovetail with it. And that's what most interests me is that, again, that it, it's a, another direction to kind of look at things and consider them as they're doing this overall evaluation that could really have some positive effects in some of this um, inflexibility. Teachers have talked to me a lot about feeling like things are so prescriptive on them and, and inflexible. And, and this nuance provides the ideas about flexibility, I think actually probably speak more to the changing world we live in than maybe it did even 10 years ago. So I think there's just value in that extra nuance that this brings to the table that without this bill, I, I heard nothing about that this, that part would already be being done through the process, so. Okay, you ready to work the bill? All right. I have an amendment on page one. Um, I have LSO brought to my attention that on page one, line three and four, that requiring adoption of graduation standards as specified is no longer needed as the Senate has stripped this portion out. Mr. Chairman. So therefore I recommend that we strike that language. I'll second. Okay. Go ahead, discussion, Representative Berger. Well, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment that I would like to propose and it takes all that out uh, and, and brings that whole amendment and adds some more language to the, the and amendments to the bill. And LSO asked me to clean okay, this so up. We have a motion on the floor. Okay. That's all. Any discussion on the motion? Not appearing to proceed to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Noes. Any noes? That motion's passed. I heard, thought my ears were pretty good. So. <laughs> Thank you. Any further amendments? Go ahead, Sam Clauston. Did you have one? I did. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So on uh, page two, line seven, I just want to add after level or grade band. I think that addresses kind of what Mr. Shaner was speaking okay. towards. Could you say that again? So page two, line seven, at, after level. Uh, add or grade to band. So the period would be after band. We'll strike the period after level. Second. And move in second that we add on page two, line seven, at grade band after the word level. Questions? Um, hey. <laughs> Any more discussion on it? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that adoptions or that amendment's been adopted. While we're on that, I would like to ask to the committee today in the in education of education, we learned that mm -hmm. the state board was working on these standards and that they have reduced them greatly. So if we publish uniform content and performance standards as seen on page two, when should we do that? Do we do it after? The state board has worked through them, or do we publish it once and turn around and publish it again in a year? It's a question I'm asking you. Senator, please. And you're welcome to sit and work the bill with us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Deliberately left vague for that very reason. I think that as they're reducing perhaps the number of standards, that's probably a good thing, but that doesn't address the overlay of the subject matter content. So it's left open-ended, and that actually is why this bill I think is critical right now so that we don't just reduce the number and say, well, we already did this work, it's done, because it's not done. Um, so that's why it's left open-ended. This also doesn't put in like a requirement that they have all the standards done. I think this gives the department and the state board the flexibility to work on this study and then phase in that timeline of how it could proceed to get it all, all the ducks aligned. So that's why it's, that's why the bill's that way. I don't know if you see it that way, but that's why it's that way. That'll work. That's the answer I'm looking for. Thank you. Okay, further amendments on page one, page two. Further amendments on page three. We're going to go through it. Page four. 
Everybody's all right with the date on page five? Yeah. Representative Berger, you have an amendment. Would you like to bring it? I'd like to bring my amendment and I'd like to bring amendment number one to Senate file uh, 132. And I'd like to, anyways, I'd like to move this amendment. Do you have a number on it or is it conceptual? It's proposed. It's been proposed, proposed, proposed okay. amendment. Number one. Please explain, go ahead. Okay, so this this is the this this amendment that actually does three things. Okay, I know it's long and there's a lot of writing here, but it does three things. First, it allows or allows use of courses course completion to measure student performance and refines the study uh, contained in the bill in the following two ways. Okay, so. If you look on the second page, one, it requires content and performance standards are limited to a total of 800 standards because we got like 1900 standards. Let's make some guidance here and say, let's get this refined down to 800 standards at least. And number two, it requires in this part of this study, the review of ways to streamline and minimize district and statewide assessments and consider use of the ACT to fulfill statewide assessment requirements at high school level. And my any questions? I mean, this is this is kind of where we're looking. What I wanted to ask Senator Ellis. I mean, do you see one and two as or th those those second requirements at back page of of, of kind of maybe enhancing this this study mr chairman Go ahead, I Senator lo Ellis. love your if I, I love your comments please. i have I've, I've looked at this first sorry um, mr chairman you know we we have some requirements on bill title this is meant to be a study and it was only intended to look at the state board of education not to get into the realm of assessments just okay. yet i think that's all future work that could happen I always get nervous when you start adding new whole sections of um, requirements, especially duties of boards of trustees. At this point, I don't think we need our trustees to be doing anything. Okay. Um, second, on the rest of the page, I think it takes all of that permissive language and would make it mandatory. The reason that we made such substantial amendments on the Senate side of taking some of those mandatory study elements was one of time and cost. When I visited with the department, it was $70,000. We think we can get this much work done by this date and have a deliverable to the legislature by then. If we make all of this mandatory again and then add other components, it will add time and cost. What that is, I don't know, but that'd be my guess. And so, you know, some of these are great concepts, I'm sure, more appropriate for another bill in 2024. Further comments or discussion from the committee? Well, then, Good. Representative Clauston, Mr. Chairman, yeah, I agree with Senator Ellis. I mean, this this bill is about doing a study. You know, this this amendment is talking about adopt a student assessment system. So I think uh, I'm not sure it's even germane to what we're trying to accomplish in this. Go ahead, Representative Lawley. I also agree. I don't think it's germane. And again, I think what Senator Ellis has done with this bill or is trying to do dovetails with the process that's already going on, I think enhances that process in ways that are very important. And to cloud that success with this bill, with these other requirements is not a good idea. A motion on the floor. Any more comments or discussion? I guess the-, the, the Please do, go ahead, Representative. Chairman, the, the comment or question I have is, I, I sure would, uh, now I'm here, I sure would like to work on this. I sure would like to get together with all of us and and start looking at these, you know, um, how how we take off the plate of the, of these teachers. They're frustrated, they're they're burnt out, and and where does that reflect? It reflects right into the students as well. They see their teachers. We're working hard, and uh, I just want to be able to. I, I don't know how, how do I want to say. Um, <laughs> anyway, I just want to help teachers and I want to help these kids. I want to look at these assessments as well. And I agree it should probably be looked at in another bill or in another time, but I, uh, I would hope that we look at this. 
Representative Berger, I'm glad that the state board has decided to start down this path, and I believe that their continued work will be well welcomed on this. Go ahead, Senator Ellis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think the good news for this committee is what is next on your agenda? Talking about interim topics? Yep. Okay. Motion on the floor. Any more comments, discussion? None appearing, we'll proceed to, oh, Representative Clauston. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Did we move those dates back? Or are they still the? Not, we have not yet. Okay. Thank you. We have the motion on the floor. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. no. That motion's failed. Further motions? Something about a date? Go ahead, Representative Clauston. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, if the Senator is agreeable to it, uh, page five, line 10, um, should we move November 1st to 24 versus 23? Any Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Representative. Or, I'm sorry, Senator Ellis. Yeah, I think in talking with the department, we had November 20, November 1st of 2023 as a deliverable for two of the study items. I, so I think November 1st is appropriate. I think they asked for some language as, as practical, and I can't remember where they asked for that to be inserted, but that was their request. It wasn't to change the date. Are we mistaken? If you were to adjust any of the, and this is, I, this is something I actually don't, Go either way on it, but it's more that paragraph D, 17 through 22, based on the report and recommendations, the Joint Ed Committee um, may consider or develop enabling legislation by 2020 for the 2024 budget session. Take it in, leave it out. It doesn't that doesn't affect me? I think if there are good ideas and that require legislative changes, you'll act on it. And if there aren't any, then you won't. I don't want to tie the hands or make you feel rushed. I, I think the big purpose of this is. This is a big ship. Um, and if I've learned anything of my six or seven years working on this stuff, it doesn't happen fast if you're going to do it right. So that's where I don't feel like there's an urgency to um, have it, all this work done and laid out for 2024. But I, I defer to the department. I'd rather have it done right than some, soon. Mr. Shainer, I'm saying Chief Shainer. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. The amendment that Representative Clauston made on page two about four grade band that um, address the amendment that I had, I had spoken to earlier. As to the timelines, um, the, uh, the standards work and the streamlining, uh, we could certainly report out on that by November 1 of this year, um, definitely. The, um, the basket of goods work is something that we've talked about um, for many years and the recalibration discussion that you all will eventually get introduced to if you haven't already. Um, We've talked about that because generally what we do with recalibration is the consultants are hired, they come in and they do a cost analysis on the existing basket of goods. So we don't ever take the time to look at the existing basket of goods before those consultants come in. So I think what the, what the Senator's getting at with this is, hey, we need to start that discussion before the consultants are retained if there is anything that needs to change in that basket. That being said, it is a very um, challenging and robust conversation when you start talking about the basket of goods. That because that is that is not only what dictates what is taught in the classrooms, it has an, a financial impact on school districts. So getting um, a major revision or study done on the basket of goods by November 1st, probably not practical, but can we come start getting some ideas in front of you by November 1st? I think so. Go ahead, Representative Lawley. Uh, Senator Ellis, to Mr. Chairman, Senator Ellis, to your point about uh, on page five, uh, lines 21 and 22, would you be amenable to putting a period after the word consideration and striking the rest of that? Madam, Mr. Chairman, yes. Is that an amendment? I'm, I was about to move it, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make an amendment on page five 
line 22 after the word consider consideration, a, insert a period and then uh, delete the balance of that line and then line 22. Second. Moving seconded that we delete um, that after the word consideration, we insert a period and then delete the balance of that line and the balance of 22. And moved and seconded. Moved by Lolly, seconded by Clauston. Any discussion? Not appearing to proceed to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We've accepted that and work in that amendment. Anybody else have anything? Go ahead, Senator Ellis. Just the last thing before you vote. Um, to Representative Provenza's point, that same group, it was the same group that I think was at your hearing that really had concerns about one bill. It was the same group of people that were at our hearing that really, one of them said they love this bill. It doesn't happen to me very often. <laughs> <laughs> Moon landing maybe. Um, but no, I think it's because this is trying to take a very nuanced approach. Um, it's not prescriptive. We're trying to explore the space. Um, I haven't had any negative feedback from this. Um, so I, I do think there's a difference and I would, you know, certainly you, the, the process is what the process is, but we just urge, resist the temptation or maybe the urge to make this bill something it's not. This wasn't intended to fix assessments. This wasn't intended to tell, this has one intent. And, you know, as things move over, um, we're, we're late in the game. Um, it's not lost to me that this is the absolute last bill brought to this committee. Um, so, you know, whether or not this will survive beyond this session, I don't know, but I just would say, um, you know, just don't bring a bill. If you don't like it, vote against it. Bring your own bill next year. Um, this is what it is, and we'll see how it does. Mr. Chairman. Rep. Senator Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, Senator, I, I appreciate what you just said, and you've said it twice now. I, I'm, I'm a little disturbed by the notion that, yes, this was the last bill that was brought forward, but it's also at the prerogative of the chairman to bring a bill when they see fit. And we worked the bill. And we will work this bill as we move forward. But I, I think that it's there's due deference given to when a bill comes forward, it's it's the bicameralism of what we do. And I just I I'm really we're bordering the idea that this was nefarious in some way, shape, or form. And I, I don't think that that was the case. I, I won't speak for my chairman, but I will say that I, I give due deference to this bill, just like I do every other bill that comes forward. Um, I don't think that there was any nefarious actions being brought forward that this is the last bill that we've considered in committee. So thank you for offering that, Representative Brown. Any other comments on the bill? Yeah. Please call. Go ahead, Representative Berger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, I'd just like to again uh, say to Mr. Or, or Senator Ellis that, you know, all I want to do is help. I guess I did it in the wrong way or whatever. I I thought we worked bills. I didn't see anything in Masons. I've been looking when when we can amend. Uh, is is there a five day period? Is it, it, it? I mean, I've been trying to look for the rules that say you have to go to the sponsor of of the bill. I'm I'm looking for those rules and I haven't found them yet. And I just I just want to make sure I'm doing things right. Mr. Chairman, I don't know how things work on your side of the chamber. In our chamber, it's not written in rules. It's a matter of um, courtesy to your colleagues. When you were going to bring an amendment, to you, I, to every colleague on the Senate floor, when I bring an amendment, I say, hey, I noticed this, or I don't like this about your bill. I'm going to bring an amendment. We usually have an, a conversation about it. If there's substantial changes, sometimes we sit down and work it out. If it makes sense for us to try and come together on language, we do that together. Um, there's no written rule about that. That's a common courtesy that I try to afford major legis to legislator legislatures, my colleagues, excuse me, legislators. Sometimes in your positions, we all sit at the dais, we look and read bills, we hear public feedback, we hear concerns, and we do work on the fly. I understand that. I do that all, all the time to respond to things that we hear. I think my concern is always that we work together the best way we can to avoid any kind of confusion. I think there was big, significant changes that if you and I had discussed some of that, maybe we could have worked together to find a better solution, maybe understood each other a little bit more on bill titles. Those are things I take very seriously, um, you know, not going outside the scope of what's in a bill. Um, but these are my end of preferences as a legislator. This is how, when I had mentors reaching out to me and helping me navigate this, this is what I would learned. So um, there's nothing in rule. I appreciate the work that you do. I appreciate that we're here. I don't know that this will be re-referred today to House Appropriations or if that 
kills the bill effectively today. Hence my concern about it being the last on the list. Um, but nonetheless. Any more comments on the bill? If not, we'll proceed to vote. Please call the roll. Representative Allred. Aye. Representative Andrew. Aye. Representative Berger. Aye. Representative Brown. No. Representative Clauston. Aye. Representative Lawling. Aye. Representative Obermuller. No. Representative Provenza. No. Chairman Northrop. No. Five like eyes, four no's. Mr. Chairman, can I change my vote? No, I've had nervous. That was the yeah, chairman. It's your prerogative. Okay. Yeah, just well, it's not fully been wrote up yet, so yes, you may do whatever you'd like. No. So it's four eyes, five no's. It fails. All right. Thank you. Yep. Why don't we just... I haven't been retrieved like no, that. 